Today I'm going to a place that is near the North Pole above St. Petersburg, Russia, and it is named the Kola Peninsula. Right here. Go to it. Okay, so here it is, right here, the Kola Peninsula, and if you look a little further south, St. Petersburg is right here. This is Finland, Sweden, all of these countries here, but this piece of land belongs to Russia. And it was from this peninsula here where this airplane right here took off carrying this gigantic bomb that you can see underneath it. Here's another photo of it right here. This is called the uh, Tu-95V, also known as the Bear, the Russian Bear airplane. It took off from an airport and I'm pretty certain it was this airport right here, and it was carrying the biggest nuclear bomb ever used in the history of the world. The date was October 30th, 1961, and the Soviet Union wanted to test a giant weapon. Now, the reason I say it took off from this airport is because this is an old military installation that is no longer in use, and so is this one up here. But the difference is, this length, the length of this runway is about a mile and a half, and the length of this runway is a little over two miles. Now, the bomb that they were carrying was 27 feet long. It was about 7 feet in diameter, actually 6 feet 11 inches in diameter to be exact. It weighed just under 30 tons. It weighed 59,524 pounds, so that's about 476 pounds short of 30 tons. So when you're flying an airplane that's carrying a bomb that big and that heavy you want as much runway length as possible before you take off so my guess I'm gonna make the assumption that they did take off from this runway here you probably used up a good length if not all of the length of the runway and then kinda of made a slight right turn and started heading for their destination their destination was over 600 miles away and it was this island right here. Now this gigantic bomb, giant thermonuclear bomb, a hydrogen bomb, was dropped over this part of the island, roughly in this general area here. It was dropped from an altitude of 34,000 feet, which is very high, and it had a parachute behind it to slow it down. The parachute itself weighed, they say it weighed 1,763 pounds, and that's what was required to slow down this 30-ton bomb so that the airplane and the pilot had a chance to get away. Now the bomb f floated down on the parachute and it detonated 13,000 feet above the ground over this area and that's kind of why you don't see any giant crater that the bomb may have made because it was detonated over two and a half miles above the ground. I'm going to show you another picture here. It's this one here. This is the actual picture of the bomb leaving the airplane when they dropped it. The pilot continued on and they gave him a 50% chance of living and that's why they put the parachute on it just to give him a 50% chance of living and that pilot was 28 miles away let's see from this area to about here he was 28 miles away so roughly right in there I'm gonna save that right about in here when the bomb detonated and the pilot did end up surviving although the airplane did take a nosedive roughly a nosedive for about one kilometer but it did recover once once the blast hit it it took a nosedive but it did recover and the pilot did live and he did make it back to the airport that he took off from now this bomb was said to be one thousand five hundred and seventy five times more powerful than the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, the nuclear bombs combined. That's how powerful it was. Now what would that look like from here? Well, let's see. I'm going to pull back a little. Right about here. From here, the mushroom cloud went 40 miles high and peaked at 59 miles high right in this area. It was also about 25 miles in diameter. All the buildings on Severny Island right here within 34 miles of ground zero were totally destroyed gone. At 62 miles, third-degree burns would have occurred had there been anybody there. 
One participant in the test felt thermal heat at 170 miles away. Let's see, 170 miles. Let's get an idea here. That would be from here. I'm going to go 170 miles. So my guess is that that person was somewhere here on the island. So that's roughly 170, right? Right about here. Save that. So over here, a heat wave could be felt from ground zero 170 miles away. At 430 miles away, a shock wave was observed. So let's see, I'm going to go from here and let's go 100, 430. So 430 would be right about here. And that sweeps around to about here. So you're looking, I'll just put it over here, 430 miles. So if you take that out and swing it around, that means that 430 miles that we're going to feel it all over in here. And at the same time, window panes were partially broken up to 560 miles away. So 560 miles, I'm going to slide this out of the way. I'm going to not go too far, I'll put it up here. 560 miles from here, I'm going to say, well, right about... Right about here. Save that. We'll put another one in. 560 miles. Right here. So you get an idea of how powerful that blast was. I'm going to pull out a little here. You can see here is the original place they took off from. And how big that blast was or how much energy came from that blast. Also, this atomic bomb registered a 5 to a 5.25 on the Richter scale, and sensors continued to identify the shock waves after the shock waves went around the Earth three times. They could still continue to measure the shock waves after three times surrounding the globe. That's how powerful this bomb was. It was the most powerful bomb ever detonated in the history of the world, right over this area on this island here. It was detonated by the Soviet Union on October 30th, 1961, about 11.30, 11.32 in the morning Soviet Union time. So there you have it, the location of the Tsar bomb, or the King of Bombs, right here from Google Earth.